Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and we've got a pretty little simple computation problem here. Um, I'm going to work this one without a calculator because if you did just have um, like a square root or an exponent type problem uh, like this, it would definitely come up on the non-calculator section of the GED. Um, typically they're not quite this simple. It shows up in order of operation problems or something like that. Um, but we will take a look at this um, and work our way up to the level of complexity that we eventually need. So this problem does just say simplify. Simplify. And you might be thinking, um, a lot of my students, when I say simplify, they go, oh my gosh, I have to do fractions. That's not what simplify means. Your elementary school teacher scarred you. Uh, simplify, as basically as I can put it, means to perform the indicated operation, obey the signs, basically. Now, what uh, sign, what operand is here? Um, oh, I can't spell indication. I meant to say indicated. Perform the indicated operation. Well, what operation do I see indicated here? That's your first clue. What is this symbol? I see the symbol, but what does it mean? This means the square root. And we just say the square root of because we're only talking about one number when we do square roots, so the square root of 81. So that's what this problem is telling us to do symbolically, so, uh, so when we simplify, we'll just go ahead and do that. So the square root of 81, a lot of students forget how to do square root. They mistakenly divide by two or half something when they're doing square root. Uh, that's not what it means. Um, so, you know, Operations have opposites. Like us, we know that like add and subtract are opposites. Like when you add two numbers together, you could pull them back apart again by subtracting. Same thing with multiplying and dividing. You multiply two numbers together, you could divide them back apart again through division. Uh, we have the same thing with square root. Square root is actually the opposite of a mathematical operation known as squared. So if I say square root of 81, I'm really asking you what number squared is equal to 81. And for those of you who are familiar with these exponents, these little floating numbers, you know that I mean that there is some number out there that if I multiply it by itself, that's what squaring means, multiply it by itself, it would equal 81. Now, half of you guys are already done with the problem. You don't need to do any work because you go, I know what number times itself equals 81. 9 times 9 equals 81. Yeah, so since 9 times 9 equals 81, uh, that means that the square root of 81 is just 9. The square root of 81. What's the root of 81? What is it made out of? It's made out of 9 multiplying by itself two times. So, um, so the square root of 81 is just 9. Don't be the silly student who puts that little 9 squared there. That's not true. We're going back to the root. We just want the number itself. Okay, so square root of 81 is 9. Uh, for those of you who struggle with that, you could just start going through your perfect squares. Like 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9. For, again, 4 squared means 4 times 4. That's what it means, and I'm kind of writing one thing and saying another, uh, so don't get lost. Uh, but 6 squared means 6 times 6, or 36. 7 squared. Okay, and these numbers here that I am writing down are known as the perfect squares. There is very little in math that I ask my students to memorize, like very little. Like most math teachers want you to memorize your times tables, and I'm like, hey, I don't care if you memorize your times tables, just memorize the seven times tables. All the rest we'll use divisibility tricks for. Like I'm that lenient. But this is one of those things, the perfect squares. This list of numbers here that I highly recommend you memorize. Because if you have them memorized, problems like this will come to you in a snap. Um, things that uh, just mystify other people. So anyway, the square root of 81 is 9. Um, and if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I will answer it as best as I can.